Well, good morning, Miramar, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tamara G. You can check us out on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. We all know it's right here in Miramar, and right here with us is our esteemed mayor of the City of Miramar, Mayor Wayne M. Messam. Mayor Messam, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. How you been? I've been great, but I mean, you've been even better and you've been working hard and you want to let everybody in Miramar know just what's happening in the city, right? You know, on November 3rd, we have the annual State of the City Address. Um, It's one of my favorite um, duties that I perform for the city of Miramar because I get an opportunity to say exactly where the city stands, some of the accomplishments uh, we've accomplished over the last year, as well as laying a groundwork in terms of where we're going into the future. Um, This year is going to be uh, no exception. It will be very informative. In fact, um, there will be a little switch up. Um, Typically, I would um, share what happened over the last year, but um, what I'm going to do is take us down memory lane. Um, Since I've become uh, mayor of the city of Miramar in 2015, to just to share, you know, what were we hearing at the time in terms of what residents were asking for and what some of the concerns and needs were at that time, and basically go down a checklist of what we have done and what we have accomplished together as a city to address those issues. So I'm really excited about that. Well, just in the seven years that you have been mayor, uh, Mayor Messam, the city has really grown. I mean, when you first came in, do you remember what the population was and now what it is in Miramar? Uh, I think when I, at the time, the population was just north of about 120,000. Um, now we're almost 150,000. Um, the city really did not um, have a sense of identity. Uh, we had grown so fast, you know, being a bedroom community between Miami and Fort Lauderdale, the city really exploded um, in the 2000s to the mid um, teens. And we really, um, couldn't slow down enough really to say, okay, here is who we are. This is what we want to be. But because the city was continuing to grow, bringing in new residents, new businesses, um, it pretty much evolved to where we were at the time. But um, now I think uh, we have definitely matured as a city. Uh, We definitely have put our stake in the ground in terms of who we are and what we offer. And I look forward to sharing it on November 3rd. Well, as someone who uh, works for the city of Miramar, and particularly was there uh, day in and day out when you first became mayor, you know, there's a new police station that was built. Uh, There's a new amphitheater that was built. Uh, There's been so many things uh, on the historic side of Miramar, lots of improvements um, dealing with uh, buildings and building codes. Uh, And then, of course, Central. Uh, I I know all of the corridor right there in Central at uh, Palm and on uh, Miramar Parkway. I mean, it's just been it's been big. (laughs) Yes, yes, it truly has been. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, and so coming out of a year of uh, two years of COVID, actually, when kind of the city was kind of shut down, what can people um, expect to hear you talk about on November 3rd as far as how we've come out of that? You know, uh, during last year's State of the City Address, I shared exactly what the city was doing and how we fared during the pandemic. Uh, We basically have the pandemic at our rearview mirror. We're not forgetting about it, but we definitely have moved on in terms of um, laying the groundwork for our path forward. Uh, We uh, are really um, excited and thankful for the opportunity to have our city employees to really stand in the gap to serve not only our residents, but our business community. And because of that effort, um, it really has propelled us into where we are today. Uh, The city of Miramar, we definitely have, uh, we've received so many recognitions and awards as it relates to um, the city's smart city initiatives in terms of the city's um, ability and being a place for the economic well-being for African Americans as as well as um, uh, Hispanic and Latino Americans. And we're really proud of that. Um, And when you really think about the infrastructure investments we've made in historic Miramar, um, we really have positioned the city to to revitalize um, historic Miramar. And that revitalization has already begun. And we'll be sharing uh, more statistics about that. But at the end of the day, um, what I'm most 
um, focused on um, despite um, having such um, success and growth over the last seven years, um, I'm not resting on our laurels. Uh, we have to make sure that we are preparing the city for the next 15, 20, 25 years. And when the leaders of the time in the future, um, they will look back and will be um, grateful that we have invested in ourselves to put ourselves in a position so that we can have a sustainable city well years into the future. If you're just tuning in to Good Morning Miramar, welcome to the show. We're speaking with our very own Mayor Wayne M. Messam about the State of the City Address that is happening on Thursday, November 3rd. It's going to be at the Miramar Cultural Center, which is where it usually is every year, so it's going to be great, uh, starting at 6.30 in the afternoon. Now, Mayor Messam, you know, we talked about all the great things that are happening um, in Miramar and how the city is growing. Yet there are some people, you know, who remember Miramar as a bedroom community and they kind of wanted it to stay that way. But when you have 150,000 <laughs> residents, I don't know if it can stay a bedroom community. Well, it, it definitely cannot. Uh, but the beauty though of Miramar is that despite our growth, uh, it does feel like a hometown, um, a hometown where, um, where we wanted to ensure that our residents have a place for recreation, for culture, for entertainment, uh, for access to um, good restaurants. I remember the day when we had very few restaurants. We always had to leave the city just to have a nice place to, to eat. Uh, but we have several sports bar grills now. We have um, you know, very nice quality restaurants. And uh, the fact that we have um, um, some under construction right now and a few that are planned, uh, we, Miramar definitely will be the place to be holistically. So now before uh, where a family moved to Miramar just seven years ago, um, would not have a place necessarily go to as a family without leaving the city limits or driving 15, 20 or 30 minutes away mm -hmm. um, to the point where they can go just five minutes from their home um, to a nice place to eat or to watch a concert or to see a play. Um, or to um, do whatever you want to do in the city of Miramar while enjoying the rest of what South Florida has to offer. And that's what's so great about the community, um, about the city of Miramar. We've grown with Florida's 13th largest city now, but it doesn't feel like it. That's the beauty about Miramar. Yeah. And, you know, one of the very few cities as well that has a dog park. Yes, because um, that's a, you know, in other cities, that's a luxury, <laughs> but in Miramar, you know, it's expected to have a dog park. And so uh, people are always out there with their dogs and they're always enjoying themselves. People are using the the um, Miramar Amphitheater more and um, the hotels. So it really is growing. And these are some of the things that you're going to be talking about during the state of the city. Yes. And for sure, um, I always end off of, uh, with our future as our climax and you don't wanna miss what's coming to the city of Miramar. And, and I'm not just saying that to hype it, it's, um, it's really spectacular in terms of what is being planned um, and what is just around the corner as it relates to permit applications to developments that uh, not you know, in the far future, but we're talking in, as imminent as a couple of months um, that where um, permits will be um, submitted and our, our residents will definitely benefit um, from that. And I'll close with this. Um, I'm so excited about um, challenging our city manager and our um, city staff um, about uh, the future of Miramar. Um, I've already put in place uh, Miramar's commitment um, in the um, race to net zero, where we as a city, um, our goal is to have a zero carbon footprint um, in terms of our operations, um, in terms of the vehicles that we have. Um, so we're really thinking out in the future. I've already challenged our staff to bring back to my office a master plan for electric vehicle um, charging infrastructure throughout the city. I want Myanmar to be the most connected and EV friendly city um, all of all of South Florida. Um, it will take um, a concerted effort, but you have to think big. You have to um, you know, be visionary. You have to know where industry is going. 
um, so that we can be ready for it. And we have to make these decisions now. Uh, by 2030, 40% of the cars on the road will be electric vehicles. Um, so you don't want to uh, be in a city where outside of your home where you would charge your car. If you drive out to any one of our shopping centers or to a city facility, you know, I mean, if you need to charge you, you should have the infrastructure there to be able to, to, to do so. So those are just, just a sneak peek of, in terms of what to expect on November 3rd. Well, I appreciate the ones that are at Shirley Branca Park because I use that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for putting those there. Yes. Uh, but yes, you're right. Need them all over the city. Uh, need the uh, fast electric chargers as well. So hopefully yes. that'll be something that people can learn more about at the State of the City address that's happening on Thursday, November 3rd. So how can people uh, register for Do you want them to register or can they just come? Uh, yes, they should register. We are having it in the banquet hall of the Miramar Cultural Center. The event is, is, is interactive. It is not a stale presentation. Um, it will be, I uh, have multiple um, screens and the, 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 the audio visual um, presentation of just the interviews of community members, the, the slide presentations, and just um, um, uh, my editorial on uh, the, the, the accomplishments and what's to come will be very, very informative. So if you are a resident, if you are a business owner, if you are a potential business owner, or a potential resident, or just a stakeholder in our community, you want to be in the know. And by coming to the state of the city on November 3rd, um, 6.30, we're asking everyone to RSVP. Um, seating will be limited. Uh, we do expect it to be at capacity. So you want to make sure that you have your um, RSVP in um, on the address available so that you can register and make sure that you are in the place on November 3rd. All right, so miramarfl.gov. It is right there on the home page. You just click, I just did it. You just click on it and you can register right there. So again, miramarfl.gov is where you would go to RSVP. You'll see Mayor Messam's face, the state of the city address right there. And then you just click on it and be sure to RSVP. Again, it is happening Thursday, November 3rd at 6.30 PM at the Miramar Cultural Center Banquet Hall. That's right next to City Hall. It's connected to it, uh, 2400 Civic Center Place. So thank you very much, Mayor Wayne M. Messam from the city of Miramar talking about the state of the city address that is happening November 3rd. Again, you wanna be in the house house November the 3rd at 6 30 just go to miramarfl.gov to pre-register thank you so very much Mayor Messam I know you got to run because you, yes. you're headed somewhere <laughs> <laughs> thank I'm getting you ready much. for the state of the city that's where I have to go <laughs> there you go thank you so much and we'll uh, talk to you next time and until next time thank you so much for watching see you bye-bye everyone <laughs>